Politics never ends, does it? Um, let's focus, no. first of all, on Lord Guide's uh, resignation. Uh, you know, in many... I mean, he hasn't resigned over Partygate. It doesn't seem like he has. Uh, and in many ways, that's made it more complicated. It's almost kind of let the... the it's not had the effect, the desired effect, I think the critics would have hoped uh, when it comes to the Prime Minister's position. I'm not sure quite what you mean by that, because it's... What it has done is shown that um, the Prime Minister, frankly, seems to be a man who doesn't understand what ethics are. It seems to be a mystery to him. When, you know, to for his own ethics advisor to say that, you know, he what he was asked to do was basically to approve breaching the ministerial code. There is no criticism, actually, I think, that you can make of Boris Johnson now and, and his attitude towards the ministerial code and the ethics of office and things that really encompasses how frustrating, disappointed and just downright annoyed that the whole country is, that we're getting this litany of, you know, just ethical disaster and, you know, morally bankrupt decision one after another. There seems to be no end to it. No, but in saying that, you said the whole country's frustrated, but, but in a large degree, the, the not, though, isn't that the point, that you know, lots of voters, lots of voters who voted for him, lots who, who didn't, know he's not Mother Teresa. I don't think he's ever claimed to be, and that they are willing to, to accept um, whatever standards um, that, that, that he's willing to uphold to. As in, I don't think the whole country is frustrated. There's still a lot of people who quite like him out there. Irrespective of these resignations, oh, I don't mean I don't mean that you will not find um, people in the country. But what I mean is the general feeling in the country. When I am out talking to my constituents in Edinburgh West, when I'm talking to um, people down at Westminster, when you know I I've, I've been talking, I was down in Tiverton and, and Honiton the other week, and when I'm talking to people, they are frustrated that this is what is happening all the time. We are in the middle of an emergency, a cost of living emergency, an energy energy price emergency. We've just had a pandemic. There is a war in Ukraine and the Prime Minister is a Prime Minister about whom there just seems to be this constant controversy and, you know, questions. And what we need is a Prime Minister who is above all of that. And there is a general feeling out there that this is just not good enough. And it's not just amongst the country. There's 148, possibly now more, Conservative MPs who felt that the time had come to move on. And I think that, you know, a lot of us are disappointed in them that they didn't. They, they weren't able to persuade enough of their colleagues that the country just needs to move on, that we need someone else um, representing us abroad, someone else being the, the face of the British government, the voice of the British government, of the British people.